the home of the do-it-yourself trucker. When everything goes wrong, you got to redneck and nice. So I just got a question on the Facebook Live. So does does Ohio have a automatic restriction on their CDL? Uh, what do you mean an automatic restriction? Like you can only drive trucks that have automatics? Uh, yeah, I believe that if you're, yeah, I, I, I can't be 100% positive, but I do believe that one of my buddies, Donnie, uh, in fact, he was just over today, I think he said that his cousin or nephew or somebody, I don't know, somebody that he knew went and trained when they went through driving school, they trained on an automatic and that's all they're allowed to drive. Right. So in order to drive, uh, to get a job with a company, if they've got manual transmission, you have to go re- be recertified and train and get recertified to drive a manual transmission. Crazy, right. huh? Yeah, isn't that crazy? And that, that's so funny to me. Yeah. I mean... Uh, My opinion, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be able to drive anything. If you can't drive a manual, you shouldn't be able to drive, period. Well, yeah, I mean, that's and that's what we always thought. When, when, when I remember when I was coming through, some drivers trained on automatics, and then, of course, some, some trucks, uh, trucking companies, they were buying those auto shifts, which, you know, they were kind of like automatic, but not really. But... Uh, you know, there's all these different ones. You know, remember when they came out with the Super 10? You know, that was always a big confusion yeah. because they, you couldn't, the gears were different, you know, so it was hard. It, shifting was it was hard. But uh, our safety guy, you know, he, his question, they asked him, what about doing the uh, automatic versus manual and all that? And he's like, well, why not, why not do both? You know, why not make sure everybody's trained on, sh- on, on doing the uh, manual? That way, if you do get an automatic, there's no big deal. You know, and then if you, if you, get, in, if you get into a manual, you're good to go. It ain't that hard, you know? I think it's real interesting. I think they should do like they did back back when I first started with driving. When when my dad, my grandfather, and them all started to start teaching me to drive, take you out and put them in a Mac with a with a you know with a duplex or or a triplex or a quadruplex. Put them in one of them. Something there. When you learn to drive that, now you could say you're a truck driver. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the you other one of them in there now with two sticks or three sticks in it, they'll look at you like they're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. Well, and then well, and, and basically you would be because there ain't no way they, but, they just wouldn't do it. They yeah. couldn't do it. Well, think about think about all the others. Think about all the others. Remember, remember the whole deal came down with a lot of these companies. These big companies uh, had their different shops to where they didn't want you to uh, to double clutch. They wanted you to float, or they didn't want you to float. They wanted you to double clutch. And that was the other that was the other question that was brought. And he's like, he's like, so do we allow drivers to clutch or to to uh, to float? You know, because certain circumstances, you know, and the mechanics, a lot of mechanics, there were. I mean, even the mechanics were kind of split on it. Saying that floating was better than double clutching, and double clutching was better than floating. You know, so so there's a lot of debate on that, and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, depending on how you did it, you know, if you did it right, either way, no matter what, if you did something right, you weren't going to tear anything up. But you know, when the problem is, you get somebody that don't know what they're doing, and you try to tell them to do it, then yeah, you're going to mess stuff up. So yeah, wear, wear and tear is going to tear up no matter what. Oh uh, well, it's just like I told Tip when, when I got Tip and during her and I started, she started driving. You know, they, they teach, everybody gets taught, you know, you double clutch. Most of your driving schools, they teach you, well, they did until they got a mask come around. They teach you double clutch. You got double clutch. And if you didn't double clutch, they'd fail you for it. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, if I got to, if I had to take another driving test right now and, and I had to double clutch, I'd fail it. I'd fail it right. bigger than anything. Yep. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I float, I float shift all the time. I touch the clutch when I start, and I push the clutch if I have to stop. But other than that, I can go anywhere I got, and I never, I never touch the clutch. Unless it's just the touch toe on it to get the take off or something, or reach over to keep the foot or switch, whatever. But I, I can't, I can't double clutch. If I double clutch, I'll grind gears, I'll miss gears. I can't do it. Yeah, the, so many the, years of foot shifting. So the only way you'll use the clutch is if it's if in your left hand, then right. That's the only way that you can use the clutch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's 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 crazy, but it, it's and, you know, and and what 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 you know mechanics. If, if they're a good mechanic at all, a mechanic will tell you, I mean, me from working on my own truck and, and as many years as I am, anytime that you break that clutch loose from the flywheel, you're wearing on that clutch. Right. Anytime, anytime that that clutch and flywheel separates, if you separate it by pushing that clutch, then you separate them plates. And that clutch touches that flywheel, I don't care, I don't care. As soon as that clutch hit, they're slipping here. For a second, mm-hmm. split second, whatever, you're wearing on that clutch disc. Right. You know, if you don't, if you don't touch that clutch, you got no wear there. It's not wearing if it don't separate. If it don't, if it don't come, and, you know, if it don't disconnect and and come, you know, uncontact with that that flywheel, it's not wearing nothing. But every time that that flywheel, that clutch disc breaks loose, you know, separates and makes contact with that with that flywheel, you got wear there. Yeah, it's not much. It's not it, over time, but it's a point that it's there. There you go. 
I got, you know, I, I got probably three, 400,000 miles on my clutch, and, and I've never adjusted it. My clutch has not been adjusted. I, I put it in there. Well, when I re- this one here, when I rebuilt, when I rebuilt the engine in mine here two years ago, we rebuilt this, this Detroit. And I got 13 speed. I put when I when I put the engine back in the truck and everything. I done an auto frame on it. Uh, when we put it back in, I put new clutch, everything, new clutch, new flywheel, everything, everything new in it. Adjusted it up. It's been two two and a half. Yeah, going on two and a half years. I've never had to adjust the clutch yet. It's just like it was the day that I adjusted it up. So it's like yeah, it's all you're driving. You know, you want to go out there and cowboy. You 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 you're gonna wear the things. You're gonna tear things up. Right. It's you live and learn, you know, you live and learn. It's all just, uh, it's, it's just, you got to learn. You learn from your mistakes. There you go. There you go. You know, you can go and tell somebody, you can tell somebody the right way to do it. And it don't matter because they're going to do what they want to do anyhow. So you don't even bother anymore. You know, you just let them do what they do. Hmm. Hmm. You just sit back and say, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. So what it is, yeah. it's what it's all about is it, like I said, you get it done and, uh, and taking care of your equipment. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so you gonna hang out here for a little while? I got, uh, I think I got Robbie on the other line too. I'm not real sure uh, what he's thinking about. Yeah, yeah, I'll be, uh, yeah, I'll be here for a little bit. I, yeah. I just got done out there, so I just come up to the so I got to go up and I got to call Ed because last week it was pretty much a wash. Last week, so I said, yeah, yeah I'm gonna. Yeah. I didn't even time got away from me. You know, I was out there working, so I figured, yeah, I'll come in and I was get dark here, and I'll go ahead and give him a call. Right, right. So go ahead and get a, get a, get a hold of that boy. Yeah, here he is, right here. You hear Robbie? Well, yeah. But Greg, you're gonna leave because I got I finally chimed in. <laughs> leave? No, I got I got no reason to leave. I, I ain't scared. Oh, okay. I'm a big boy. I ain't scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat. I, I, I can. I can eat your weight for dinner, man. I you, you know wait. You ain't nothing. Oh, I bet you could. Better have a heater. Mm, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robbie. Robbie, I want you to know that that that. I told Tip what you said about the fire pit up here. Did you come up next week or whatever? And, and she went out today and bought a fire pit just so you would have a fire pit so you could sit out here in the backyard and stay warm and drink a beer with us while you're up here. Hmm. I just want you to know that. Now, tell me that ain't spoiled. No kidding. She should be good then. Yeah. <laughs> Well then, then already, uh, then I'll I'll go ahead and put my two cents in, and and that is is that is as long as it ain't raining or snowing, then we better be out riding. So that's all I can tell you. <laughs> I, hey, I, hey, you know, hey, that's not right. I'm, I'm, I got the bikes out today. The first time they've been out of the garage, probably in, I'll say probably over a month. Man, and 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 I put I I pushed them out of the garage backwards and set them out there in the driveway side by side, all three of them, and. They sat there, and I cleaned the garage, straightened it out, put my tea bucket in there, and got it ready so I could start working on it. And I put the Kawasaki up in the building over there, the walk, and I put it up in the shed out of the way and put the two Harleys in the garage behind the tea bucket. I, I'm thinking, you know, I started them up long enough to pull them up in the garage and, and shut them right back off. Yep, yep. And that first, that's the most they've been running in, in, I bet you, probably a month and a half. Man. Yeah, I, was I just, just don't. We have a road bike this summer. Yeah, been too much other stuff going on. Yeah, I've already said when I pack my bags, I, you know, I was thinking about. Well, I know I'm gonna take my jacket, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna take my gloves. I'm gonna take my my uh, liner, all that stuff that I can that I need. If it's, you know, all I need is a is a stocking cap and uh, and and all that. If it's if it's chilly, that's fine. As long as it ain't snowing or raining, man. I tell you what, it's actually not supposed to be too bad up here. Uh, October. It's, they're calling for in the seventies up here. I think on the yeah. I think the second one the other way. I think they're supposed. I think it's, they're they're calling for like seventy degrees up there. Yep. It's uh, so in the mornings yeah, out I here mean, now. That was just right. Yeah, in the mornings down here, every morning it's like seventy-seven, seventy-eight degrees every morning here when the sun first comes up, and it's nice. Oh. It's nice to get out and ride at that time. Yeah, it's been seven. It's been seven seventies here in the morning, and then and it gets right up. It don't take nothing. It's right up in the eighties today. It was eighty, eighty-one, eighty-three, something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Too damn hot for me. Damn. Be all right, maybe get about sixty five, seventy and stay there year round. I'd be yeah. good with that. Yeah. Meanwhile I'm I'm down here. That's, 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 it's warm it's warm enough that I'm comfortable and it's just cold enough that it keeps Robbie away. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it's been it, it's still been in the triple digits back in Phoenix. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's in, it's always in the 90s. Every every day, it, go, it starts out at like 78, 79, and then by noontime, it's already like 92, 93 down here. Mm. Yep. Good stuff. Hey. 